An all analog pressing with a fantastic soundstage, excellent imaging, Hall of Fame musician and songwriter for less than $30? Mmm, let's go! I want to say thank you for, uh, for joining today. You have found your way over to the Modest Audiophile channel, and my name is Mark. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. As the intro described, I hope today we are going to go over Paul Simon's Graceland. Yes, this is an all analog, cut, produced, recorded, I don't know, triple A. It's less than $30 in 2024. Outstanding soundstage and even better imaging. Get more to this in a second here. So real quick, we'll go over a real quick background of this album. We'll talk about packaging and condition. We'll get into how it sounds and really what was remarkable on some of these songs. Hopefully I can pull that out and you get some value out of it, okay? Get you out of here as quickly as I can. All right, so Graceland is the seventh solo studio album by Paul Simon. It was produced by Simon, engineered by Roy Haley and released on August 25th, 1986 by Warner Brothers Records. It was recorded between October of 1985 and June of 1986. It was recorded all over the world, but the main studios were the Hit Factory in New York City, London, Los Angeles, Louisiana, and South Africa. All in, it's 43 minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, Graceland became Simon's most successful studio album and his highest charting album in over a decade. It is estimated to have sold more than 16 million copies worldwide, it received acclaim, won the 1987 Grammy for Album of the Year, and is frequently cited as one of the best albums in history. In 2006, it was added to the U.S. National Recording Registry as, quote, culturally, historically, and aesthetically important. Yes, this was the seventh studio album that he did back in 1987. This one in particular we're going to discuss today is the 25th anniversary edition that came out in 2012. So I, I frequent a couple websites that I'm always looking for really, really good all analog pressings that are currently in print today, right? Not the unobtainium stuff that you can't get your hands on anymore, or it's gonna cost you darn near 500 to $1,000 to get your hands on an original copy No, no. I'm looking for currently in print all analog pressings, and uh, this one hit many lists as being one of the top 100 that are still in print today. Back in, back in 1986, I was 17 years old when this album came out, and I was listening to a lot of other things at the time. But I do remember the news that this thing made. I mean, Paul Simon was everywhere. He was on all the morning shows. He was on Saturday Night Live um, pitching this album. He was on different TV specials. Paul Simon in 1987 was everywhere. It was almost like a big comeback for him. Yes, we all remember him, or those who are older than me remember him with uh, Simon and Garfunkel. And then he had a miraculous um, solo career starting in the set 1970, right, when Simon and Garfunkel broke up. But by the time the 80s came around, Paul Simon hit a little bit of a ditch, um, both professionally and personally. So when this album came out, and did what it did in 1987. Paul Simon, like I said, was everywhere. You couldn't mistake it, even for a 17-year-old high school student who um, wasn't necessarily listening to Paul Simon every day at the time. With that said, uh, there wasn't a song on this album that I didn't know when I was listening through it because you heard it so much either on uh, the radio, your parents' car when you were driving in their car, or uh, Saturday Night Live, he was on there quite a lot. So yeah, Paul Simon and Graceland certainly was forefront in our everyday lives at the time. So real quick, we'll go over just a couple of the credits on this thing, and then we'll go over the packaging and presentation and overall condition of this record, and then get into how this thing sounds, and it sounds awesome. All right, so real quick, as far as uh, some of the credits on this album, 
This thing was, the lacquer was cut at Sterling Sound by Ryan K. Smith, and it was pressed by RTI, all right? The overall condition of this album, really good. Now, I went out and I got this at a uh, brick and mortar record store. I try to keep a list of some of these albums that are supposedly in the top 100 of all analog print available today, if that came out right. Anyway, I was uh, running some errands. I jumped into the record store and lo and behold, this was there. So I grabbed a copy of this. In fact, I paid $29.98. Yes, less than $30, which is a flipping rarity at this time. It's a whole nother discussion. Vinyl's getting too expensive. Even the, the new stuff's getting too expensive. All right, so inside, you get a couple things here. Well, let's, let's show the front again, and we'll show the back. So the front of the album, back, nice write up on the back. Nice cardboard stock. This thing's not flimsy at all. It's, it's nice, it's nice. Great value for $30, by the way. On the inside, the uh, record sleeve, yeah, paper sleeve, kaka. Go get yourself a polyline sleeve and put that in afterwards. But what you do get is you get a list of all of the songs, the lyrics, and the credits per song. And uh, that's fantastic. All right. What else came in here that was a little bit of candy? Let's see if I can open this thing up. You get a, not that we all need a big poster of this thing. But you get a nice, heavy paper poster. It's huge, right? Look at this thing. Ah, huge. If I hold it up that way. <laughs> anyway, it's big. It's going back in the record sleeve because I don't have any room in my walls to put this thing. The overall condition of the vinyl itself was great. It's a 180 gram piece of vinyl. It's flat. It doesn't have any pops. There was no clicks, relatively no surface noise whatsoever. Now, granted, first thing I did when I bought it is I put it into the Humming Guru, gave it a nice bath, and then uh, put it on the turntable and it sounded really, really nice. So what we all wanna know, right? How does this thing sound? So real quick, before we go into any detail on how it sounds, let me tell you what I'm playing it on first, okay? Again, this is the Modest Audiophile channel. This is a modest system that I have behind me. I am playing this on an Audio-Technica LP120 turntable with an upgraded cart, the ML cart, if I'm not mistaken. Go check it out in the description below. That is going through a Project 2Box S2 with upgraded Genelex Golden Lion tubes, and that is going into my Rotel A11 Tribute integrated amp, and then out these Wharfdale Denton 85th Anniversary Edition speakers. All right, so the overall soundstage on this thing, for the most part, really, really solid. It's a good, uh, I say three to four feet outside the speakers. In case on this side, it's actually going outside the wall. My speakers are set three feet in front of the wall, eight and a half feet apart, and I'm about eight and a half feet away over here, right behind the camera. Where this thing shines, frankly, is the overall image. The image on this thing is so crystal clear, like laser etched image. One of the better images that I have amongst all of my records. And again, for one that's not a Analog Productions or a Mobile Fidelity, this is just a repressed 25th anniversary edition on a 180 gram piece of vinyl. And the image on this thing is really fantastic. It shines. The treble, <clears throat> you're getting crystal clear highs on this thing, very, very detailed. And again, I've got these Wharfdale speakers, which aren't necessarily re they're nice, really nice, maybe just a hint warm of center. And I'm getting ridiculous detail coming out of these speakers on this album. Great detail. We'll hit Y on a couple songs here coming up. But outstanding treble. You're getting a lot of highs. You're feeling that, that, that space and air within the recordings. Really good treble. The mids I put full and lush, very clear, vocally some of these drums in there, the different um, pieces of percussion, background vocals. Oh, background vocals on this album is fantastic. 
you're getting outstanding mid-range. And the bass, I put fulfilling bass, fills the room without being boomy. I have no complaints whatsoever about the bass on this album. Some of these songs really, really shine extra bright when it comes to bass. As far as the overall tone stack, it's really, really good. Some of the words that came to mind while I was doing this, it, it's, it's edgy, a lot of presence in this album. When I mean edgy, it's you've got hard lines within the image. The image is just locked. There's no, no blurriness in the, uh, in the overall image. Fantastic image. Crystal clear, punchy, really like the drums on this album from start to finish. And it's the 80s, and you definitely have that 80s sound of these drums, and it's all over the album. A lot of panning of the drums. The drums are one of the biggest vocal points, that and I think the overall background vocals. It's a great album for percussion and drums. Really, really good. The DB checks that I did, the first song I did was Graceland, which is the second song on the first side of the album. The low end, I was getting 73 decibels, high end 95 for an average of 85. A very pleasant 85, I may say. The second decibel check that I did, and this one really shows a lot of dynamic range on this song, uh, was Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes, which is the fifth song on side one. I had a low end of 52, a high end of 102, mm, yeah, for an, average of eight, for an average of 84 decibels. If I do the math, right, that's 50 decibels difference between the low and the high end. Outstanding. That alone should be one of the reasons why you purchase this album. All right, and the last decibel check I did, which was the third song on the second side called Homeless. It's an all a cappella song. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Low end was 49. High end was 94 for an average of 79. All right, let's get on to side one. Side one starts with... A song that we've all heard before, if you're a Gen Xer and you remember this on the radio, uh, obviously Boomers, you heard it, you remember it. This thing was being played in 1987, probably right into 1988. These songs were all over the place. MTV. I don't think VH1 was a thing yet. MTV was still playing music videos and, uh, and obviously all over the radio. Um, so, The Boy in the Bubble is the first song on this album. Starts off with an accordion, um, very sharp image and full sound is what I put. Great punch with the drums. So you get that accordion coming in and then right away, boom, boom, those 80s drums come in loud and clear and it kind of sets you back uh, when you first put the needle down. Really nice. Um, I put great cymbal crashes as well. Really nice um, presentation of this song. I've never heard this song this good before. And that's going to be something uh, that's prevalent, that statement will be prevalent throughout the rest of this um, review. I don't know. Through the rest of the album. All right. Second song, title track, Graceland. Awesome percussion I put here. Um, the intro starts with, right, I've said this, I call them sticks. They're clabs, I think. So you get these wooden sticks, that sound that it makes in its center. And then it's almost like a call and response. So you got the clabs in the center, it'll click, click, and then that'll be the call and the response from left and right of the sound stage, you're getting more percussion that kind of answers that. So again, from a percussion and drumming perspective, this album is really cool when it comes to sound stage and imaging. I put so much presence in this song. It was like listening to the song for the very first time again. I was hearing new instruments that I hadn't heard before, and that's, that's why we're all here, right? That was fantastic. Pristine clarity, full, satisfying is what I put here. Um, what I didn't know was that the Everly Brothers, did I say that right? Everly Brothers played on the song or sang on the song with Paul Simon. So they were part of the, uh, they were the backing vocals. Didn't know that. Sounds great. All right, from Graceland, we go into the third song, which is called I Know What I Know. And the first thing I put here is big. This is a big sound stage. It's tall, it's wide. It's as tall and wide as any other song on the album. And it's present, it's up, it's up front too. It's a really good sound stage. I put great bass and drum punch. You feel it in your chest. Now, I won't do this for every song, but let me give you a, 
and I won't cover all the instruments on this song, but right as, as far as the overall sound stage and where everybody is in the center, you've got in the center you got Paul's vocals and the drums. You got the bass in the center as well, and you got this nice um, this nice electric guitar coming out from say center right. When you get to the backing vocals, which come out mostly in the in the chorus, the backing vocals are at the extremes of the sound stage left and right. So the sound stage does expand. It's almost like the sound stage is breathing while you're listening to it. It's very, very cool. You get to the um, the far extent of your sound stage with those backing vocals. Paul plays synthesizer on this, and there were two songs, this one and the next one, where he played synthesizer on, and it had a cool effect. So within this song, the synthesizer is playing like a note run, but it starts off on the left side of the soundstage and then circles from the right back around to the left again. Very cool. It wasn't up front. It was midway back into the overall depth of the soundstage. And I didn't say this earlier on, but the overall soundstage from a depth, pers a depth perspective is very good. Uh, you're getting some instrumentation in, t in the room a little bit, in front of the speakers, as well as uh, the majority of it from the speakers back to the wall. So overall, you're getting a great sense of depth uh, on this record. Yeah, and again, you had some nice panning effects with some of the instruments in the background. Really, really good. Really good song. That goes into the fourth song called Gumboots. This is classic Paul Simon. Lyrics, awesome. Great storytelling. The whole album's a great storytell. The older I get, the more I appreciate it. Really, really good. The verse is, the soundstage with the verse is really, or the verses, I should say, is really from the speakers inward. And then when you get to the chorus, it goes to the speakers out. So again, um, I don't know who the engineer was on this, but they really played with the overall soundstage, and, and that's what I liked. So again, on this one, the verse was in between, sorry about that, uh, the overall verse was in between the speakers, and then when the chorus came in, it expanded it outside the speakers as well. I put great sax in the center of the soundstage. There's a couple different saxophones playing on the song, but when it comes to the time for the solo, sax is up front and present, and you really get that kind of in the room feeling when you hear that. And again, Paul's playing synthesizer, and he does that same effect on this song as he did in the one beforehand, where he's doing some type of a keyboard run on the synthesizer. It starts off on the left side of the soundstage and kind of loops around from right back to left again, and it's not the focal point. It's, it's, it's back a little bit, but um, like a lot of other songs in this, if you open your ears and listen to all what's going on, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. All right, so the fifth song on side one, the last song on side one, which was one of my favorites arguably, and if you were around back in 1987, you remember this one very well, called Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes, and it's like hearing it for the very first time again. This version on this record, coming out of this modestly priced system, the detail, detail, and more detail you're getting. It's fantastic. This thing is very layered soundstage. There's a lot going on if you open up your ears and really take a good listen to it. It starts off with a real sweet electric guitar, a little bit of delay, a little bit of reverb, and then the drums punch you right there. I just put effing great song. It really is. My head bobbing the whole time. You know, you get that, you can't help yourself. The song starts off and the head just starts to bob up and down. Great bass playing on this song as well, I put. Um, and there's a part, again, if you know the song, you know horns come in left and right of the sound stage and they pop. Uh, they're practically in the room, these horns, and really outstanding portion of the sound stage. Layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah, do yourself a favor. We'll get to that at the end, but yeah, this is one of those songs that just really, really shined on the album. Fantastic. All right, let's go over to side two. Hey, everybody, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, yeah, to all of you folks. If this is the first time you found your way to the Modest Audiophile channel, awesome. Thanks so much. If this is your second, third, fourth, or Jeez, if you're a repeat offender, thank you so much. Really, thank you a lot. I can't believe it. I've been doing this less than a year. 
I've got over 500 subscribers now. Thank you. Thank you so much. So pat yourselves on the back. If you really like this channel, yeah, subscribe for those who haven't. If you like it, hit like. That's it. Okay, everybody, let's get back to some Paul Simon because this thing's just too much fun. <laughs> Side two starts off with arguably the most well-known, maybe popular song on the album. I don't know. I just remember it from being the MTV video with Paul Simon and Chevy Chase sitting down and doing funny things to the song. So, yeah, you can call me out. What a song, again, like hearing for the very first time. And again, the head starts to bob up and down and big smile on my face. Uh, fantastic. What I put here is, yeah, big, big drums. And then there's a section right after the intro where you get three really big drum, pop, drum pops. First one's in the center, second one's on the right, last one's on the left, and it goes boom, boom, boom. And you're like, oh, here's my soundstage, nice and wide and very articulate. When the backing vocals come, up, come in during the chorus, I put down here, they... The, you get the backing, so, so Paul's main verse is he's in the center, but then the backing vocals come in during the chorus and they really fatten up the left side and the right side of the soundstage. I can't really articulate it any different than that. It, it's really cool. Um, I, it might be Paul Simon double tracking himself, I'm not sure, but the backing vocals coming in from the left and right were big and present. Um, I put so sweet sounding, it was like a new song all over again. And uh, then there's a flute playing, right? I think uh, in the video, Chevy Chase is playing the flute. But when that part comes on, it really adds to the sense of overall depth. And that flute is just, or maybe it's a piccolo or something else. I'll find out here and put a picture of it. Um, it really sounds present in the room. That, that flute or piccolo, whatever it is, is really up front and pristine sounding. All right. After that one, you go to song two, which is called Under African Skies. And I didn't know this. I put, the first time I, I wrote notes down on the song, I'm like, who's the background singer? Who's the backup singer? Who's this woman singing? It, it sounded familiar, but I couldn't place it. It's Linda Ronstadt. So yeah, Linda Ronstadt's doing backing vocals. We're almost sharing some of the vocals with Paul on this one. Nice reverb on this, and, and, and a little bit of a delay, more than I remember it. Uh, really comes through well on, on this system and I should say on this pressing and uh, it kind of gives it again more feeling of depth. The vocals sound absolutely outstanding. Paul's in the center and then Linda when she comes in she's like almost over the shoulder of Paul depending on when in the song it could be both it could be you know, either or uh, and then when you get into the chorus you kind of she's she's coming out of both sides of the, of the soundstage as well. Anyway, really nice blending of vocals on this song. I put great depth with drums, cymbal roll from back to front. So there's a section of this song where you get that, that cymbal, soft cymbal roll, and it gets a little bit louder as it goes. But it starts off back in the soundstage, and then it ends more in the front of the sound stage. So you're getting some movement with that cymbal roll. Pretty neat. Uh, so detailed, um, it ends and you hear, you know, the clacking of, the, the tape was rolling and you probably heard some clacking of, um, you know, the drums or whatever was going on in the studio, but you, you, you hear that as well. You know, very, very present again uh, in the sound stage. So the third song on side two is a song called Homeless. And I put here, this may be a reason to buy this album just for this song alone. I've said that a few times. Go get the album. It's great. Homeless is an all acapella song, and it's performed by, or performed with, I should say, Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Yep, Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Put a picture here, hopefully. And, uh, and Paul Simon. So again, an all acapella song that gives, gave me chills. You get a sense, I got a sense anyway, sitting in my room and this group of individuals kind of, you know, like a half moon, half moon around me. And yeah, you get that great presence of being in the same space with these singers. Uh, when Paul comes in, probably about 
two-thirds of the way through, again, it's a wow moment. It's, it's when he sings that line, somebody sing. And then, you know, he's the call, the other singers are the response. i thinking about it now, I'm getting chills. Great song, really, really good. You get a lot of different vocal sounds, right? The that and clicks and pops and all good, <laughs> not mistakes on the album. Again, an all acapella thing that'll blow your flipping mind if you haven't heard it before. And if you have heard it before, but you haven't heard it on your Modesty Price sound system, yeah, get a copy of this, it'll blow your mind too. Uh, it was almost like a religious experience I put here. <laughs> and that ends with a great transition into Crazy Love Volume 2. Really good transition, right? So you go from that all acapella in your mind's eye, you're zeroed in on what the soundstage looks like, and then it transitions really well into Crazy Love Volume 2 with a very nice guitar intro, and then the drums come in and punch you up. Uh, wakes you up, and yeah, it's great. Um, I put nice small delay that you're hearing on the guitars as well. I didn't hear that before. Um, maybe my ears are more accustomed and open to hearing that stuff now, but yeah, again, this is a really, really well, really, really good sound stage and imaging on this album. Layered, I said. It's a layered image with precise imaging. Um, you get a little bit of swirling and panning in the background. You know, it's not like a whole lot of love by Zeppelin, right? It's you get in the background, um, or the mid-ground, we'll say, you've got some instruments that are doing a little bit of swirling and fading, and it's a nice effect, really nice. Fun song, I put. All right, and that goes into the fifth song, which is called That Was Your Mother. Put a little, I don't know if this is the right word, ragtime, but definitely a little bit of New Orleans flavor to it. In fact, in the, in the lyrics, you know, New Orleans is called up. Um, you get that vibe. It's a toe tapper. I put, it's got a washboard. Yes, there's an instrument on here, a actual washboard. So think of that. You kind of get the feel, the vibe of what the overall song sounds like if you haven't heard it before. I put Pure, si <clears throat> Pure Simon again, meaning that it's just, Pure Paul Simon. Um, his lyrics, the way the song moves along, pure Paul Simon. Very, very good song. Tight, I put. Um, nice drums in, isol in isolation near the end. Just about, I don't know, 20 seconds left to go in the song. All the instruments fade out, and you, it, but the drums are present, and they're so crisp and so clean in your room. Really good. And then the instruments come in and finish it up for the last three or four seconds. Clear ending with the rattles again. Um, you got that in that room sense. The last song on the album is called All Around the World or The Myth of Fingerprints. It's something I didn't know about this until I did some research is uh, Los Lobos. Yes, the band Los Lobos uh, performed on this song with Paul Simon. So that was pretty cool. Again, another one. It's a toe tapper. The drums come in, pow, 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 wakes you up. Uh, you get a lot of thump, you feel the drums. Percussion is, this is cool. So if we want to cut the depth of the soundstage in thirds, you've got what's in front of the speakers, we'll say what is right at your speaker level and then what's coming in from behind the speakers. And you are getting drums and percussion every one of those locations. So it's showing really, really good depth. Um, a lot of fun this song was. And I, I put, you know, this was one of the least familiar songs I knew on the album. I don't recall a video of this song. It was vaguely familiar as far as the melody goes, but I don't really remember this song too much. Put down here, it's one of my favorites now. This is a really fun song. Yeah, lots going on if you listen to it. And that's really the case with most of the songs, if not all the songs on this album. If you sit back and just give yourself time to listen to it, open those ears up, you will hear so much going on and that will uh, it'll showcase the overall sound stage and imaging to you so what are my final thoughts on this album get it <laughs> um, overall thoughts is for again less than 30 bucks this could have been 40 50 60 i won't i don't really want to spend more than 60 dollars on an album 
Uh, but if you can get a, an album that sounds this good from a soundstage and imaging perspective for less than 30 bucks, I gotta say, yeah, go find yourself a copy of this. It's still out there, it's still in print, really, really fun. And for those that are, you know, my age, Gen Xers or Boomers, right, you can remember, go back and listen to this again. It'll put a smile on your face. It's, you can't help it. I also wanted to say, I, again, at the time this came out, I was 17 years old. I'm listening to everything under the sun, but not a lot of Paul Simon at the time. Um, I really appreciate this a heck of a lot more now than I did then. This was a, a really fun album to listen to. So that's it, everybody. Paul Simon's Graceland, 25th anniversary edition that came out in 2012. This is gonna put a smile on your face. If you are a soundstage and imaging person, like I am, yeah, this is gonna be a nice ride for what, 42 minutes I think this thing's in, this thing takes all in? Yeah, if you're a Gen Xer and you remember this coming out in 1986, 1987, you just might enjoy it more now than you did back in the day. If you're a baby boomer, older than us, this will put a smile on your face, I'm sure. Go down memory lane a little bit. And for those that may be a bit younger and you're just a fan of, uh, again, soundstage and imaging, you're not going to go wrong with this thing. It's really cool. So the lesson is do yourself a favor. Yes, you matter. you got a lot going on in your lives. Take the time for you. Go find a copy of this. Bring it home. Set some time aside when you're alone or when the family leaves you alone. 42 minutes, I think, this thing takes. Get yourself your favorite beverage, maybe a snack with it. I think in my case, I found a brand new scotch that I really liked and I had it with some cheese and crackers. Uh, that's, another, that's another conversation for maybe a different channel. But yeah, do yourself a favor for you. Go out there, put it on the turntable, put this on, have the smile come across your face and the stress of the day, the week, the month, the year, whatever it is, kind of melt away for a little while while you're listening to it. That's it. Thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. This is a great album. I wholeheartedly recommend it. Go out there and have some fun for yourself, okay? Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.